if in 1993 it was couples devils that got us laurels, Kabir Khan ensures that it is Ranveer Singh and his 11 that muster all the compliments for the film. It's a must see. For those who love cinema, watch it. It's a nice sport biopic, true to the script, a good script, true to a narrative, largely real, substantially real, and extremely well executed. Also, Lagan apart, I can't think of a Hindi film that deals with cricket and is good. Therefore, for lovers of sport and for lovers of cinema, there is this heady cocktail. Take it and watch it in the theatres. If you're waiting at home saying it's going to come on Netflix or it's going to come on some other OTT platform, don't do that. This is a film worth watching at the theatres. The fun of watching a cricket match may be debatable whether you should be doing it at home or at a large stadium. But this, as a film, is to be watched on screen. Long list of names to acknowledge, so let's go with this. Tahir Raj Bhasan plays Sunny Gavaskar. Jeeva, the Tamil actor, plays Krish Shrikant. We have Jatin Sharma playing Yashpal Sharma. And this becomes important because Yashpal Sharma played such an important role in that 1983 World Cup. We have Chirag Patil playing a very well-fed and slightly shorter Sandeep Patil. You have Dinkar Sharma playing Kirti Azad. Strangely, not much of him is seen. Nishan Dalya playing Roger Bini, important role. Hardy Sandhu playing Madan Lal. Sahil Khatar playing Syed Kimani. Ami Virk playing Balvinder Singh Sandhu, again an important role. Adinath Kotare playing Dilipeng Sakar, of course, who gets injured and doesn't play some of the most important matches. We have Dharia Karwa playing a very lean Ravi Shastri. We have Sakib Salim playing Mohinder Amana. So far for the team. And I'm not going to name their uh, real names. I'll go into their cricketing names. Guys who play Sunny Gavaskar. Jeeva who's playing uh, Chris Shrikant. Top class. That contrasting style between a very elusive Sunny Gavaskar and a very uh, comradely Chris Shrikant is so, so visible. I would rate Jeeva's performance among the top in this film because he plays the uh, ever fun-filled Krishnamachari Shrikant. He has picked up some of his mannerisms, his language, his style, his machi, all in place. Perfect performance from Krishnamachari Shrikant's role from Jiva. Most other characters fall into their roles, like the guy who plays uh, Balvinder Singh Sandhu. Gurun mentioned Balvinder Singh Sandhu later on also. Then there are every other character in the team, apart from which I will have to mention Brijendra Kala and Meena Gupta, who play character actors outside of the playing team and still have great uh, moments in the film. And Pankaj Tripathi, what an actor, what is he doing? Every time he's on screen, he emphatically ensures that there is a mention about him. Here he plays India's manager, PR Man Singh. And I've heard some nice stories from Man, who's told me about what happened in the World Cup. And it's interesting that Man speaks uh, with a typical Hyderabadi accent, Kaiko, Ao, and all that, and very well done. Uh, I think I read Sunil Shetty say this somewhere, that when he watched the premiere, preview of the film, he didn't notice uh, Ranveer at all because he was only seeing couple there. Voice perfect. So perfect that I, I have a doubt in my mind whether all the dubbing was done by Kapil Dev himself and not by Ranveer. 
so perfect. The body language, the mannerisms, Ranbir has done fantastic work. A couple of years ago, Ranbir, Ranbir Kapoor won an award for playing Sanjay Dutt. I think this is a far more credible role than what, uh, what Ranbir did as Sanjay Dutt. After all, the filmmaker could have fallen into various tempted areas, no? Like the later half of a match where India was dropping catches but came back as a good fielding side. Kabir Khan ensures that he doesn't drop catches in this film. The script is tight. Yes, there are a few initial uh, stories shown on prejudice and all that, but I think they fall in place into the narrative what he has avoided is what I would uh, point out well, more importantly than what he has said. I think in the World Cup, one of the most important matches was the india England semi-finals. That doesn't get the space it requires. Yes, it has space, but it could have been a little more. Especially the 24 overs bowled by Kirti Azad and Mohinder Ramana. I think that was the crux of that match. They stole the thunder. 24 overs, 55 runs, three wickets changed the match. And remember when I say 24 overs, we were talking of the last edition of the limited overs World Cup with 60 overs. After that, it became 50 overs when they came to India. And since then, it's always been 50 years. So in the 60 cup f format of World Cup, the highest score remains and will not be changed. Kapil Dev at a match against Zimbabwe. The BBC was on strike. But we have some feel of that when you watch IT3. The other part of the World Cup that I think goes unmentioned is Sunil Gavaskar's major contribution to the World Cup final. I'm told that after that low scoring 180 plus by India, Sunny Gavaskar told Kapil Dev in the dressing room, keep a slip throughout the match. Kapil did so. Three important catches by Sunny Gavaskar and one by Kimani at the foot of Sunny Gavaskar shows that the mind was working and it contributed in a big way to the World Cup final victory. Also that interesting scene when Sunny walks up to Madan Lal and tells him that Clive Lloyd has a foot injury and he's not able to walk properly, draw him out and get his wicket. Very interesting stories. And then of course the camaraderie, the his. I think it's a moot question today whether it was serendipity or spirit. But Kapil Dev opened up a new page. And Indian cricket has moved in a very positive direction from there in terms of player respect. Also, there's a very interesting saying when Maan comes and tells the team players, in 1947, they gave us freedom. Today, we still have not won their respect. That is what couple they've got with his devils there at the Lord's that day. That fantastic tryst with the champagnes at the Lord's was a coming of age of Indian cricket. It's a sad story that that, that spirit is today thanks to the WhatsApp pundits is gone to another extreme and we hear sad whispers of great men acting like ordinary men. On that note, with a reminder that reliving the drama of 1983 is a great sporting experience for those who had seen it then and for those who have only heard about it for generations that come from the 80s right till now. Kabir Khan's contribution is
creating a real halo against that stupendous success story that changed the path and defined some moments for Indian cricket for years to come. Thank you Kabir Khan for giving us that nice experience. Thank you Abhinav and Datu for helping me out with reaching out to all my listeners and viewers. Do write back your comments if any. And on that note, and remembering, June 25, 1983. Bye-bye.